Hey guys, today we're going to learn about the basics of styling SVG elements. There's a few foundational uh, attributes, fill, stroke, and opacity. We're going to break down these style attributes. The first one is the fill attribute. Fills can be solid colors, gradients, or patterns, and it behaves pretty similarly to the background property in CSS. When you don't specify a fill on a shape element, the fill is going to default to black. To override this behavior, you're going to need to specify the fill, or even if you don't want anything to show up, give it a fill of none. If you define a gradient or a pattern, you can reference the elements ID in your fill attribute as demonstrated here. You can manipulate the fill in CSS, you just would write the property fill and then give it a color of purple or whatever. Let's talk about the next attribute, which is stroke. Strokes are the outlines along a shape's path. And unlike a fill, which has a single attribute, there are like nearly 10 attributes all dedicated to the stroke and affecting its appearance. The main attribute is stroke and the default value is none. So you'll never see a stroke unless you specify. The attribute determines the color of the stroke. Strokes can be a solid color, a gradient, or a pattern, exactly like the fill. The thickness of the stroke is controlled by the stroke width attribute, which has a default value of one. It's pretty thin, so generally you're gonna bump that up to make it more visible. One thing to note is Unlike Adobe Illustrator and other vector software, that allows you to position the stroke outside of the shape or inside of the shape and also in the middle. SVG is limited to the middle option where half of the stroke is outside of the shape and half is inside. We're only covering the basics of styling SVG elements, but let's mention the remaining. So you got stroke line join, stroke line cap, and stroke midter limit to determine how the stroke appears around the corners. And this is how you kind of can achieve rounded strokes or bevels. Then there's also stroke dash array and stroke dash offset. And those allow you to achieve gaps where the stroke appears along a given path. The combo of those two attributes is often used in animations where a line is drawn right before your eyes. You can manipulate the stroke in CSS. So here's some examples. You can change the stroke color. You would write just stroke or the stroke width. Opacity is a numeric value that determines how visible or transparent an element appears. This value can be a number from zero to one, where the lower the number, the more see-through the given element appears. A value of zero will make it completely invisible and a value of one makes the shape completely visible. There are three relevant opacity attributes. Opacity, fill opacity, and stroke opacity. There's also stop opacity, which is related to gradients. We're gonna just talk about those first three. The opacity attribute affects both the fill and stroke of an associated element. The other two are specific to either the fill or the stroke, so you can target those respectively. You can also place the opacity attribute on a G element or a group to affect group elements together as though they were one graphic. So in a world of SVG, you can do a lot visually with these simple attributes that we learned about today, fill, stroke, I would say also stroke width, and opacity. These attributes are commonly found in SVGs and once you get hang of the basics, you can achieve a wide range of designs and effects with SVG. It's pretty foundational. If you'd like to explore and learn more about SVG, I introduce all the crazy things you can do on my website, svgbackgrounds.com slash intro in both blog and video format. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you next time.